talk out there on Wall Street about the numbers coming out of ICI showing that $33 plus billion dollars came out of stock equity funds in the first seven months of 2010. I'm joined now by Damien Hoffman. He's the co-founder of Wall Street Cheat Sheet. Uh, and Damien, there's been a lot of talk about why people are taking their money out of the stock market. You guys have written a lot about the decline of the American middle class. Is it just that people don't have money to put into stocks and what they do have they're taking out to, to fund, uh, you know, pay for groceries and other uh, basic utilities? Aaron, I think you hit the nail on the head with a very important point here, is that a lot of people are living out of principle. There's no other way to get around that. And as people's incomes have stagnated, as we know over the past decade, they've gone nowhere. And certain commodities such as oil and food are getting more expensive. Whether or not they pull back on the quarter or not is regardless to the average American family. These things are still expensive and their paycheck's not rising. Or, more unluckily, some people are out of work or a lot of people are out of work. And the, the point of the matter is, is they are, are having to tap into their nest egg to live or to keep their living standard going. And uh, Aaron, one of the issues, even though we talk a ton about how the middle class is, st is starting to disappear, is there are a lot of people in the upper middle class and the upper class whose investments, their houses, their luxury businesses are not bringing in the same income and they're boomers and they thought by this time in their life in their mid to late 60s that they'd be taking fixed income of 100 plus thousand a year to supplement their life and that money's not there now with treasuries down at 3 plus percent. Right, and, right. Uh, the Fed being at zero, you know, for a prolonged period that, that crushes anyone living on a fixed income and obviously that's a huge issue with the demographics in this country um, and at the same time we also had the Numbers out of Fidelity recently about the number of people who are tapping their 401ks, which most financial advisor would tell you is one of the worst things you can do. But if you don't have anywhere else to go, that's what that's what people are going to do. That's right. 11% last month of the people uh, who have their accounts at, at Fidelity started tapping into their 401ks or taking loans against their 401ks. And these, uh, these are basically emergency ways to fund yourself. And we think it's a very scary statistic. So with these people saying the only way that I can keep things going right now is to tap into principal, uh, it's very scary going ahead. And, and like you mentioned at the start of this segment, if people are taking money out of the stock market to live, well, we're several steps away from them feeling as though they have the disposable income to be investing in stocks or putting money back into the market. And so it, it's definitely not the right direction that we don't want to be going in. And this, this addresses the major issue. Where's the middle class going to be if they drain down or draw down their 401k drastically over the course of the next few years? We need to fix this problem now because if we have more people beyond the boomer generation lose a big substantial part of their 401k, it's going to be one of those negative feedback loops where they're going to have to be putting more money aside in the future just to catch up to where they were four, five, six years ago. So right. it's definitely not where we want to see people putting their wealth. Right, and clearly people, you know, whether Generation X or Echo, Echo Boomers or Gen Y, whatever you want to call it, people younger than the baby boomers uh, are seeing that the stock market, it's not a one-way street, and the job market is pretty grim out there. So they're clearly, for the most part, not saving for retirement at this point anywhere near the levels that they quote-unquote should be. And I, I speak for myself and a lot of my friends, people I know, they're just you living, if not paycheck to paycheck, they just don't have a lot of cushion to put money aside. Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is August 28th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, you just heard there a lot of stuff going on in the markets. And uh, this first article from FT.com, Financial Times, banks back switch to uh, renminbi for trade. And uh, it's basically the uh, yuan, but uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time pronouncing this. I look for the pronunciation. It's just uh, renminbi. I don't really know how. If someone knows a better way to explain it, uh, please do so in the comment board. Thanks. A number of the world's biggest banks have launched the international roadshows promoting the use of the renminbi to cor corporate customers instead of the dollar for trade deals with China. HSBC, which recently moved its chief executive from London to Hong Kong and Standard Chartered, are offering discounted transaction fees and other financial incentives to, s to companies that choose to trade in the Chinese currency. We're now capable of doing renminbi settlement in many parts of the world, said Chris Lewis, HSBC's uh, head of trade for Greater China. All the other major international banks are frantically trying to do the same thing. HSBC, it says, it says the move aligns the banks favorably with Beijing's policy priorities and positions them to profit from what is expected to be a rapidly growing line of business in the future. The phenomenon will increase, or sorry, will accelerate 
Beijing's drive to transform the renminbi from a domestic currency into a global medium of exchange like the dollar and euro. Yeah, I just read this um, to kind of check the pronunciation. I, I was, like I said, I was having a hard time, and I just wanted to check that, and then I noticed that it said uh, that it's usually traded in China only, uh, in greater China, but not, uh, what was it, Hong Kong and Taiwan, or Macau, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not sure about Taiwan. Um, but this next article is from Reuters. It's titled EU Prods China for Faster One Rise G20 Draft. It says the European Union thinks China has made only limited progress in allowing its yuan currency to move more rapidly and swifter action would be or help safeguard a fragile economic recovery according to a G20 document obtained by Reuters on Saturday. The document outlines uh, the EU's positions ahead of a group of 20 deputy finance leaders uh, meeting in Gwangju, South Korea, September 4th to 5th. South Korea will host a G20 leaders summit in November. The 13-page document addresses issues including the economic outlook, governance of the IMF, financial regulatory reform, and climate change. Pretty much the same crap, right? Uh, it says the draft was undated and it was not clear whether EU officials had approved it. This next article is from uh, Financial Times as well. Fed stands by to boost U.S. growth. And it says Ben Bernanke said on Friday that the Federal Reserve stood ready to boost the flagging U.S. economy and had the tools to do so, including increasing holdings of long-term assets such as treasury bonds and other securities. The comments by the chairman of the Fed came in the most eagerly awaited speech for months, with markets growing increasingly concerned about the weak economy and chronically high unemployment says there were further bad news. There was further bad news on Friday with the release of updated figures for the economic output in the second quarter with growth at an annualized rate revised down from 2.4% to 1.6%. says, quote, the issue at the stage is not whether we have the tools to help support economic activity and guard against disinflation. We do, but Mr. Bernanke said in a speech at Kansas City's Fed annual symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He said the only issue, he said, is whether, quote, the benefits of each tool in terms of additional stimulus outweigh the associated cost or risk of using that tool, Mr. Bernanke said. So moving on, uh, this next one is titled, Scarcity of Jobs Puts More at Risk of Foreclosure. Well, no shit, huh? <laughs> Pardon my French. The, jobs, the job crisis is putting more Americans at risk of losing their homes. One in ten households has missed at least one mortgage payment, and more than two million homes have been repossessed since the recession began. Uh, few expect the outlook to improve until companies start to hire steadily again and layoffs ease. And while there was some good news Thursday, a modest decrease in the number of Americans filing for jobless benefits for the first time in the month uh, says the figure is too, still too high to bring down the unemployment rate. And uh, so moving on here, it says, uh, Fed's bullard says economy slow to recover in 2011, so they're saying there's still recovery. It says the U.S. economy had a soft patch in the second quarter, but it's not likely to fall back into recession. And uh, you sh I showed this in my last video that we're already in a recession. We're heading towards a depression right now, but they're telling you fears of a recession. We're falling back, and we're falling back into recession. We're not in one. So, uh, you know, you got to just know what the heck's going on. Um, and read different articles, read different news sources, and just know what really is going on. Don't wait for me, don't wait for Reuters to, you know, uh, present this information. Go look for it and know, you know, figure out what the heck is going on, because otherwise you're going to be lost in the cell. And this right here is from St. Vale. Um, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the link, and it's basically, uh, says, Real unemployment statistics, 9.9% uh, to 17% to 22%. says the unemployment statistics coming out of the government are pretty much unbelievable. The real unemployment number is around 22%. That is the SGS figure according to shadowstats.com. It says the SGS alternate unemployment rate reflects current unemployment reporting methodology adjusted for the SGS estimated long-term discouraged workers who were defined out of the official existence in 1994. That estimate is added to the BLS estimate of U6 unemployment, which includes short-term discouraged workers. Then we have this article from uh, Press TV, Obama's housing reform plan of fraud. It says U.S. administrations 
uh, housing reform plan is a fraud and will cost more Americans to lose their homes, a former U.S. Treasury senior official says. Quote, the tax credits, in a way, deceive many home buyers and cause them to purchase into a declining market. Now, even many of the homes purchased by the tax credit are underwater. The entire program was a fraud, former U.S. Assistant Secretary of the Treasury Paul Craig Roberts told Press TV on Friday the mechanism of the U.S. administration's making home uh, making homes affordable program is to reward the lenders for modifying mortgages. Recent data, however, show that more than 600,000 trial modifications have been canceled so far. As of last month, last month about 10% of American homeowners had missed at least one mortgage payment and so are in danger of losing their homes to foreclosure. Says plummeting home prices have nearly crashed the housing market with new home sales falling a record 27% last year. This one is 10 leading retail retailers close stores. Exodus of small retailers amidst signs of, quote, free rent. 700,000 drop cable TV subscriptions. And it says signs of weak consumer uh, discretionary spending are popping up in multiple places. For example, subscriber growth suddenly stops for cable TV industry. According to data gathered by the market research, uh, cable companies saw a noticeable drop in the total number of subscribers during the second quarter of 2010. It says it's the first for an industry that has thus far seen nothing but growth. Moving down to retailers that have closed recently, um, Walmart, of course, it hasn't closed, but it says consumers just aren't shopping the way they used to. Even Walmart stores, which typically fares well during the tough economic times, is worried, quote, the slow economic recovery will continue to affect our customers, and we expect they will remain cautious about spending, said President and CEO Mike Duke in a statement that was re released during the company's second quarter earnings report. And he moved down and it talks about Saks uh, Fifth, and it says French Connection 17, uh, Amrit Kami, and uh, I'm sorry, it says uh, basically Gap. And uh, Amber Cummings and Finch. And then it goes down and says Win Dixie Stores. I believe that's a, kind of a southern chain. And then uh, Bay Bay Stores, which is kind of a mall chain. Men's Warehouse, which is a pretty big store. Charming Shops and Blockbuster. A lot of Blockbusters. It says Under Assault by Video on Demand and Online re uh, Video Rentals. Blockbuster announced earlier this year that it will plan to close 500 to 545 stores in 2010. That's an additional to the 374 closed last year. And in this article titled Monetary Shock and Awe, the Fed prepared to launch most radical intervention in history, moving down and says, quote, the committee is prepared to provide additional monetary accommodation through unconventional measures if it proves necessary, especially if the outlook were to deteriorate significantly. And that was Ben Bernanke. Uh, this is after his last um, uh, unusually unexpected, uh, quote, unusually, unusually uncertain, that's what it was. So, very unusual. No one's expecting this. Economy setting birth rate record low in 2009. Well, I think there's other factors that play into that besides the economy. All the eugenics. But that's just another positive effect for the powers that be, right? We, we're not going to have as many children if we don't have money to pay for it. it says the great collapse of the Chicago climate change, plagued by a freefall of in carbon emission prices and the perennial failure of Washington to pass any binding cap and trade bill, it seems that the Chicago Climate Exchange is on its last leg, announcing that it will be scaling back its operation, and that's Chicago Climate Exchange, or CCX. This is from the New York Times. In striking shifts, small investors flee stock market. Renewed economic uncertainty is testing Americans' generations. A uh, long love affair with the stock market investors withdrew a staggering $33 billion from domestic stock market mutual funds in the first seven months of this year, according to the Investment Company Institute, the mutual fund industry trade group. Now many are choosing investments that deem safer, like bonds. If that pace continues, more money will be pulled out of these mutual funds than, uh, in 2010 than any other year since the 1980s, with the exception of 2008 when the global financial crisis peaked. No, that's when the Ponzi scheme surfaced the effects of it. And as we're heading towards a depression, uh, again, Fed, U.S. may f face another recession. The U.S. Fed chairman has painted a grim picture for the U.S. economy, saying there is still a long way for the country to achieve economic recovery. So he's basically telling us what we already know. And after millions of Americans were scammed and fraud, uh, frauded, uh, we have this article from Propaganda Machine, Time, CNN, the case against home ownership. Yeah, America's only real asset. Oh, you know, we shouldn't have a home. You know, this is the new economy. Price rises on the way, warn supermarkets from Austrinaki delivers blow to bond buying hopes. Investors head for bunkers driving. Thank you everyone for joining me. Take care.